we got another Final Four coach. We are, it's like a basketball pod here. Nate Oates, head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. One of the most fun teams to watch in the country, and I'm so glad we're still watching them. Coach, how are you? Doing great. You say another one. Who else, who else did you have on? Oh, we had uh, Keats. Keats. Yeah, we had Keats. He no. hasn't lost since he's been on, Coach, so we're a good luck charm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you just keep having him on? <laughs> yeah. We ha- we- we're just going to keep having him on and have-, and have both of you on all the way through the championship game. And it's up to you guys. Uh, Coach, how are you feeling about actually being in the Final Four? I've read a lot about you talking about your beginnings. You know, 10 years ago, you're teaching math up north and – now, now here you are. You used to come and sleep on the, the, the floor, I heard. I don't know if that's a rumor at the Final Four to get your foot in the door, but how does this whole experience feel now that it's real? Uh, it is kind of crazy. One, one of the guys that I stayed on his floor, I hit him up, you're going to be there. He said, no. <laughs> maybe for a night, he's like, why are you trying to sleep on the floor again? <laughs> I, said, no, I, think, I think I got a hotel room this year. I think we'll be all right. But, I mean, it, it's a little surreal. I, it's, you know, I was a high school coach 11 years ago, and, Kind of like Keats was a high school guy. Danny Early was a high school guy. Yeah. I um, Now, the high school I was at was a little bit different than Hargrave and St. Benedict's. They, they went out and recruited nationally. I, you had to live in the little small – I mean, it's Romulus is a Detroit suburb, but you still had to live in the town to go there. So it's a little different. But, yeah, I'm here. I mean, it's, yeah, it's surreal. I, I, don't, I can't even imagine. I mean, I just was so happy. I remember I got my first – Final Four ticket, somebody had one, didn't want to go. Hey, would, could you use this? I was like, yeah, sure, that'd be great. You know, sitting way up in the rafters. Yeah. And now I'm going to be down on the floor coaching, trying to win a game. So it's yeah, it's a little surreal. It's come a long ways. And I caught a lot of breaks in the last, last 11 years. Best seat in the house for you uh, coming up this weekend. I, and having taught math, I think obviously one of the things you're known for is the use of analytics, which is big in football now. Uh, towards the end of my career, it became huge. And I, I feel like you guys are standouts in that right. So my question to you would be, you know, last year you lose a lot of your top players and you got to start from scratch. What role did analytics play in filling some of those holes and getting back to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, so we use an analytics company that you're familiar with that, uh, you know, Schwimmer. Yeah, you got to watch out for that guy. I don't know if you want to use him. He's pretty smart, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, it, it's called SSA. But they, um, you know, they they help in game scouting reports, but they also help figure out portal guys. It's not just ranking them; it's how do they fit with what you currently have. So you know, we've got Sears back, Ryland Griffin back, you know, and really Pringle were the only three that came back. But we had assumed we had a couple other guys, so they're like helping us find, you know, and like guard wise they targeted Estrada for us. I, you know, they, they tell us who their model's like. They definitely help. I, we don't go after a kid of hard in the portal without checking with them, having them run through their models to see how they're mesh with both the current players we have, the style of play we play, you know, what we need, all that. So they, they, they've been great. And, you know, for a while there this year, it maybe looked like we didn't have, but it's come together like we were hoping it would come together. And we're one of four teams left playing, and we rely on the analytics uh, quite a bit around here. How about on the court? Because I know there's probably some moments where you're like, dude, the analytics are wrong in this situation. You're looking at Schwimmer or, you know, all these guys that you have on your staff, and you're like, dude, you said this wouldn't happen, and it happened. Um, how hard is it to stick to your guns? Once you, like, opt into it, is it a 100% thing, or is it like the portal where you mix some of your intuition with – the numbers and the I plan mean, you know we the plan against if you watch the carolina game the plan was to not guard two of their players usually they weren't on the floor at the same time but they you know one in one out sometimes they'd be on the floor uh, together but you know the two of those guys start the game out going four or five from three now, <laughs> i think i know you're talking like, about yeah, they, these guys are like shooting under 20 percent on the year and all of a sudden they're 80 percent in the first five shots and like what, like we just, we kind of stuck with it, stuck with it, you know, hung in there. And even like the, uh, it was a Clemson game, like the expected points, you know, it was a tight game, but you know that we were down 13 at one point and a half, but the the expected points, we were, should have been up more than 11. So again, (laughs) it's just like, they're making tough shots. We're missing layups. 
So both both those games in the Sweet 16, you know, to get to the Final Four, it's like you just you got the game plan in. Things aren't going as well as you'd hoped in the first half. Stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. You know, and it's – I mean, it's happened like that with us before, even before we had Schwimmer. Like, I remember we were down 15, 14 or 15 in the second half to Tennessee, the first SEC tournament championship we won in the semifinal. They were making – all kinds of tough mid-range twos in the first half and stick with it, stick with it, keep contesting, contest harder, make it, but like it'll turn and sure enough it turned and we come back and beat them and we end up winning the tournament championship. So yeah, there, there's times when I, I know what the numbers say is supposed to be happening out here, but they just went four or five and we're now you gotta <laughs> yeah. make in-game decisions. Do you stick with it? Do you like, you gotta make adjustments. So we, we, We've got plan A and plan B and plan C sometimes, so sometimes the model's plan A isn't quite working like it's supposed to. Yeah. Coach, you're among the best-dressed coaches in basketball. <laughs> I know Dan Hurley will match you sport coat for sport coat on Saturday night, but when and how did you come to the decision to continue looking like an adult on the sideline, unlike most of your peers? <laughs> Listen, I, when you said I was one of the best dressed, I was like, well, it's not that hard anymore. There's not yeah. I mean, the, the whole PE teacher thing, these guys have taken yeah. it to another level. Yeah. And just come in and our PE teacher get, listen, I, 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 first off, the whole COVID thing, I was never 100% all on board with all of the COVID measures to begin with. Right. I didn't really like, I mean, I understood why we had to do some of it, but I didn't like the whole nobody's in the stands. We got to sit 18 feet away from each other. Like yeah, it was kind, it was kind of eerie. It was eerie. Yeah, it was very eerie. I was like, I, I, I wanted to get back to as normal as quick as possible as mm -hmm. we could. To me, back to normal was let's put on what we wore before COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody was wearing the polo or quarter zip or whatever. I think we lost a game somewhere in that COVID year. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I, like I'm going back to sport coat. Like, I told the staff, I said, I don't really care if you do it or not, because a lot of them were like, ah, like I, they want to stay relaxed. I said, it's up to you. I don't care what you do. I'm going back to the sport coat. So I put it back on. We started winning a lot more. I haven't taken it off since. And my staff at the time didn't want to go to it. I said, do whatever you want. I don't really care, you guys. So they all go with the matching polo or quarter zip. And we've, and now the, you know, we had, when I was at Buffalo, it was suit and tie. I got down here, and Wimp Sanderson had the whole plaid palace going. So I yeah. owed to Wimp. We've just kind of kept it going. Now I've got, you know, all kinds of people in Alabama getting the uh, sport coats going again down here. I was kind of wondering if you could pull the hound's tooth off, or if that's I, if he that's just a, did. Yeah, yeah, I did. That was yeah. my last game. Yeah, I had the yeah. black and white hound's tooth. Yeah, for the, and, uh, and you you the you, you finally floor. answered the question. So I mean. You know, that's such a football print, but if you make it basketball, I think it works too. Um, hey, Not Coach. I, I don't think I can the, coach the hat, the, uh, the hat would be a little much. That would be too much to me. The Brian tooth hat. I don't, I don't know yeah. if that would go. Hey, hey Coach, uh, you know, you're matching up with UConn. You know, like, obviously they're a great team. You guys are a great team in your own right. So what goes into determining – what the pace of a game is going to be like we're fans here and and we think oh this team plays fast this team likes to slow it down but how much say do you have in dictating that pace and how do you come about that also in the final four are there external factors that might affect pace like nerves or that sort of thing yeah I, that's a good question we I, we typically know going in what a team likes to play you know obviously the models would say you know this speed whatever 70 possession game, 80, you know, when we played Kentucky, that thing was, we were not very good on defense. That game gave up 117, but we knew that was going to be a fast paced game. Yeah. UConn will run on you in transition, but if they don't have a transition bucket, they have no problem, you know, milking the, and their sets, they run very elaborate, very high level sets that take a lot of time. So like, if you look, their pace numbers look slow, but they're, elite in transition it's just when they get in the half court their sets take a long time so they're gonna they're hard to guard you got to get back in transition and then you got to guard a bunch of really good that's why they're the best team in the country right now so we uh i, I would this game's not going to be you know at the kentucky level where we're both trying to fly up and down and shoot quick we're going to try to make the pace a little, a little faster you kind of probably try to slow it down a little but 
they still will run on you in transition and just so it'll be a little bit but it's not quite contrasting styles like i mean some teams we play clemson for instance that we just play they, they don't want to run at all i mean mm-hmm. they're really walking it up so it won't be to that level but it also won't be can tell or even carolina i mean carolina plays fast you know the carolina yes. game is faster so it'll be somewhere between like carolina and kentucky and a Clem- shoot you're a virginia guy yeah, it yeah. certainly won't look like virginia it won't look like virginia no. we, we we would like it if it didn't look like virginia <laughs> okay uh how about how about you know like you guys struggling down the stretch nc state had a rough patch obviously they're coming from a different place than you guys they're kind of coming out of nowhere um but i had heard that you had called some coaches to get advice on what it takes to when you limp in a little bit get hot at the right time what did those conversations yield? Yeah, so I we looked up. I mean, obviously, we, like you said, we were limping into the tournament. So we came in that meeting Sunday, stat, got the staff together, pulled this resume, this resume. So it was two Syracuse teams and South Carolina were the three that we put up there that when South Carolina made their Final Four run. Well, you know, I, I coached against Bay. I'm up, upstate New York. I been done a golf deal with him uh, outside Detroit, Craig Campy's uh, golf thing. So I had his number. I called him. He was gracious enough to call me back. We kind of talked through how did you get your team ready in those two years, and he, he was great. I called Frank Martin. He was in our league. He was great. I, you know, I got to be friends with them. He was great. You know, and, and it was more like, do you even show any of the, you know, you, you know, they both lost. I think all three of those teams lost in the first round or maybe the first or second round of the conference tournament. They lost – three out of the last four, four out of the last six, whatever it was. I, I, I don't know exactly what they all were off the top of my head, but they're, they were all like, no, just burn that tape, forget it, don't even show it, move on, sell them how you can make the run, just all how you're going to do it. So that's what I did. I mean, it's yeah. the only – now, since then, we haven't gone back to look, but that that's the only game I haven't shown one clip of any of it to our guys, mm-hmm. like no – Positive, negative, nothing. No teaching. Just forget it. Move on. Mm-hmm. So that Florida game, we weren't very good. We moved on. Now these four tournament games will show highlights, like tough blue collar plays. But like we we had to sell them, give them belief. That's what we had to do, and then give them the game plan, and then you know get our guys' minds fresh, legs fresh. And I, it, was, it was good that we got those and good. I was able to talk to those guys. Will right cell be available this weekend and for those who only locked in last weekend in what ways would you look different with him on the floor i mean before he got hurt we were starting four guards so like you know we our offense was number one in the country we, we beat texas a&m who doesn't play all that fast 100 to 75 we, we were clicking so he shoots it really well he guards well he doesn't turn it over he's the most efficient like you look at efficiency numbers he's the most efficient player we have so I, I anticipate him playing. He practiced today for the first time in a couple of weeks. Based on how that goes, you know, when you're coming back from a head injury, you got to have daily evaluations to see how everything's at. He can't take any step backwards. So if he doesn't have any, you know, steps backwards, he's going to play Saturday. And we'll be able to we, – we, we couldn't really play four guards because we only had three play. And now that we have four guards back, we can put four of them on the floor. Sometimes together we'll have more guard depth. We'll be able to do a little bit more like that. So it's uh, – I, I sure hope he plays because we're going to need every chance we can get to beat UConn. And we, we'll be able to go a little smaller, spread them out, play Grant Nelson at the five some. But Pr- Pringle's playing well. So, you, you know, you, you don't have to play Grant at the five with the four guards, but you can, you know, put five guys that can pass, dribble, and shoot out there together a little bit and, and help us a little bit more offensively maybe. Coach, uh, roll damn tide. I like it. Roll tight, fellas. Appreciate you guys. We're pulling for you. Uh, Take it easy and take care of our guys. Swim.